This is my very first time in this place this new year. And the Lord is promising you a new intervention for you to have a new glory. And it will happen and you will never forget. Let me also appreciate all our pastors. Thank you for being a pillar. God will continue to hold you. For all our deacons and deaconesses, I want to say glory to God on your behalf. May God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. For those who are so committed to the cause of God and the story of Jesus, may the Lord bless your effort. Today I'm going to talk about something perhaps you have never given an attention to. And it's going to be a very good and sweet blessing for you. Because you must need to realize what will work for you. You must be introduced into a new level of awareness and glory and breakthrough. And that is going to happen. Therefore, we close our eyes to speak to the Lord briefly that the Lord Almighty will open our eyes. Lord, please open my eyes to this wonderful revelation you are about to show me and help me never to walk in darkness anymore. In the name of the Lord, if you can do that prayer, you will come back with a live testimony today in the name of the Lord. That Lord, please open my eyes and make me to see, make me to understand, make me to walk in the light, and I will no longer walk in darkness for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. O oh Lord God of heavens and earth, thank you for bringing us together to share out of your word today to bless us, to raise us, to reinforce us. This truth, we may not have known them before. I pray that knowing them will open us to a new glory. Knowing them will make us to have a new testimony. Thank you for answering our prayers. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In Jesus' brightest name, we have prayed. And amen. amen. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. This year is a year that your life expected me supposed to show, reflect a new what? A new what? And the information I'm about to transmit to you by the permission of he that lives forever is going to be new, but it's going to be as relevant. You must realize through which way do you want to enter into this new glory. One out of these two. And that's why I tag it. A seer or a prophet anointing. You must enter into your glory by a level of anointing. Praise the Lord. I must enter into my new glory. Either by a seer anointing or by prophet anointing. Many of us, when we are before a prophet, we see him as a seer. At other times, when you are before a seer, you are confused and you think he's a prophet. The distance between two of them, today I'm sure you are going to notice it, because God may want to usher you into a new glory through a seer anointing. Anointing of the seer or anointing of the prophet. There are some who combine the two together. Some don't even know the difference between the two. That's why you are going to write a few things down for your blessing. Let me appreciate everyone who has made it as a commitment 
to ensure this work continues here. God will not break away from your story. You will always be relevant. And God will always remember the labor of your law. And you will come out with the brightest of the blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. In a bit to understand which way by which you are going to enter into your new glory. Whether it's going to be through the seer anointing or the prophet anointing or the combination of the two. First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29. And I'm going to read from verse 29 through to verse 30. Now, the heart of David the king, first and last activities of David, the up and down of the life of David, the genesis and the revelation of the life of David. From the Genesis through the Exodus and his arrival to the revelation of his life. He said they are written. They are what? They are written in the book of Samuel, the seer. It was written in whose book? Samuel, the what? The seer. And in the book of Nathan, the what? The prophet. And in the book of God, the what? Now, what does that tell you? One, there is a group of people that are called the seers. And in that verse, he identified two seers. Samuel, the seer. And he also identified God as the what? The seer. But when he came to Nathan, he called him what? The what? Now, another lesson you are bringing out of that is that there's a difference between a seer and what? I'm not sure in recent years anybody has told you that. But you are coming to it. If you must arrive at your new glory, you must know how this anointing works. There is an anointing that comes upon a man or a woman. And it will make that person a seer. There is another anointing that comes upon a man or a woman that make that person a prophet or a prophetess. When it is a man, then you call that person prophet. When it's a woman, you say, she's a what? Prophetess. But a seer is a seer. Whether a man or a woman. And one thing I've discovered is that a lot of seers are also going to go and look for seers to help them to see. A lot of prophets are also going to prophet to help them to prophesy. And if you must need to arrive at your platform for new glory, you will need anointing of either of the two, either of the prophet or the seer. I'm sure this is getting newer to some people as they are hearing me. Now, some people to arrive at their glory they will need the combination of a prophet plus that of a seer. Then a very relevant question will be, Pastor, how do I distinguish between a seer and a prophet? That's why you are in church. Because whatever you don't know, you don't use the opportunity of it to your advantage. If all you know about the phone you are holding in your hand is, hello, hello, you have known something. 
but not everything. Yes or no? Because through it, you can make text messages, WhatsApp messages, you can watch video, and apart from that, some people are selling their market over a single phone. And that is the same thing when you come to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Believe me most sincerely, there are so many information that are there for us as humans to be relevant, for you to arrive at where you are going. An anointing must empower you. That anointing will distinguish your journey. And that is why you must know the difference between a seer and a prophet. And if you don't stir up the gift of God that is in you, forever you remain a baby. And when, even though you are eager to be able to fly, and you are working with the chicken, anytime you see an eagle fly, you will say, oh, those are lucky birds. When you also, you are supposed to join the family of eagles. And this is the way by which the Lord is going to make you, to make me, to make all of us to arrive at where we are supposed to be. Don't forget, by which anointing are you going to arrive at your new glory? You see, the anointing of a seer or the anointing of a prophet or the combination of the anointing of a prophet and a seer. Now, number one, what's the difference between a prophet and a seer? Now, first and foremost, why do you need a prophet? Why do you need a seer? When there is situation that, were, that are so confusing, you want to know, because no human being wants to be in the dark. You will just want to know so that you can know the next level to take. For instance, too many mysteries are there. You remember the story of Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a dream. He dreamt that he was beside a river. And by the side of that river, cow came out of the river. Yes or no? You have read it many times. Naturally, can I ask you, do cow live inside river? No. And he became confused. So, he needed a seer to help him to understand what he saw. He had a prophetic dream. You know, there are some people who say, dream is a lie. The seer, the liar, is not so. Until you have teaching priests who will be able to help you to dissect. Many times, a lot of us have been warned not to do some certain things, but because you don't have understanding, you did it and you are punished. Through the ministry of a prophet, a lot of people have arrived at where they are going because they themselves, they are prophets and prophetesses. Some woke up and they realize it. Some don't even know whether they are a prophet or they are seers. When you are talking about seers, they look at people far away. When you are talking about prophet, they look at people far away. The Lord is bringing it closer to us. Like those who are with us in um, the workers' retreat, we said it. This year, we are going to take our net to deeper waters. Our net to where? deeper waters, more spirituality, so that your insight will be more open for you to arrive at where you are going. Now, look at it. Pharaoh had a dream of cow coming out of the river. It was a prophetic dream. And he needed a seer to help him to decode what is the meaning of my dream? I'm sure some people here, they have prophetic dream, but there is no seer around them. And if there is no seer, you go and fulfill whatever it is you are seeing on the wrong side, you'll be punished. And that was why 
when the seer came, Joseph, he was able to tell the meaning of the dream. Don't take your dream for granted. They are a message for you. Don't take some things around you for granted. They are a message for you. Therefore, where is the difference between a prophet and a seer? Why are we going into it? It's for you to wake up, to identify the prophet in you. For you to wake up and see the seer that have been in you and you have ignored for so long. So that you can practice your Christianity in a very peaceful way. Otherwise, if you are not matured on spiritual matters, people will use lying to deceive you. They, you know, economy situation now is very bad. People will come to you and tell you visions and dreams and all. And before you know what's happening, they can swindle you and you become what you have never planned for. Therefore, wake up and understand the workings of the Lord. And he says, what's the difference between the two? Now, for a prophet, a prophet is somebody who has the heart to see. His heart can see. He has not been there before, but that heart of him sees. That is a prophet. But a seer, a seer will have to see before he can hear. Two different things. A prophet have the heart to see. But a seer must see to hear. Come and let us go to the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 12. In Ezekiel chapter 12, I'm sure this is going to help you in the new year. So that you can be able to wake up and appreciate the gift of God that is in you. Fan it to flame. And you will discover that all you are looking for in Shokoto is with you. Where? In Shokoto. Son of man. Ezekiel 12, 27. Behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision see it for many he sees. The vision he see is for many days to come. And he prophesy of the time that are far off. Let me also tell you the similarity between a seer and a prophet. Both of them derive their source from Elohim, from God. But their manifestations varies. And from there, he's talking about the issue of the vision that can see many days to come. And again, in Numbers 24, Numbers chapter 24, and I'm reading from verse 3. Numbers 24, from Verse 3. It says, let me read from verse 2. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and he saw Israel in his tent according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God did what? Came upon him. He saw physical Israel on a physical environment and the spirit of God came upon him based upon what he saw. Then what now follow in verse 3? It says, and he took up a parable and said, Bela, the son of Beor, has said, the man whose eyes are open has said, what is it that he said? The one who hears the word of God, he says, which are, saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. 
What does that mean? We are together. We are talking together. But somebody is seen to a different realm. He looked into Israel physically. And the Lord opened his eyes. That's the pathway of seers. They will look at physical things. And they will hear supernatural message over it. Physical things, but we have supernatural manifestation through it. Jeremiah chapter 18. In Jeremiah, you must be taken deeper this time so that you can be able to recognize the gift of God that is in Jude. Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse. This is a combination of the one who combined seer anointing plus uh, seer prof the prophet. Prophet anointing plus seer anointing. In Jeremiah chapter 1. Now let me read from verse 4. And the word of the Lord came to me saying before I form you in the belly. I know you before. Before thou cameth forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. And have ordained thee, what? A prophet. Unto, what? Unto the nation. That is a prophet. Now, you want to see how he combined the seer anointing. And that one is there in verse In verse 11, verse 11 of the same chapter, moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what did you see? What did you see? And he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And God says, you are correct. What is that telling you about either the prophet or the seer? Some have the two together. Some have only one. But there is something that distinguishes them and there is something that unites them. Among the things that distinguishes or that unite the two was that they are highly visual. What do I mean by being visual? They see images. Some physical things. And what physical thing they see? Supernatural messages come through them. Some of you, you have seen a lot of things. The only thing is that you didn't have seer anointing. When Joseph came to Pharaoh, it was that anointing that brought him there. He said, I have a prophetic dream, but I don't understand the meaning of that dream. And Joseph said, sir, wherever you see that water, water represents a lot of people. Whenever you are talking about cow, cow is a business. So, meaning that a good economy will come out in the midst of a lot of people to your advantage. And when you have good economic situations, you must know how to maintain it well. At other times, bad economic situation will come. But the one you maintain before is going to help you to overcome the one that will come at later times. What does that tell you? Those who have that anointing, they have what I call pictorial illustrations in their dreams. Jeremiah said, I see the tree of an almond tree. And God said, you are correct. Those who are in the prophetic ministry, either as that of a seer or a prophet, they have good 
mental picture of what is on ground. Sometimes you may dream and you see another person carrying another person. Now, spiritually, it is not supposed to be. And, but when the, you have that picture, the Lord may be telling you that, look, there is an oppression going on here. Somebody is taking advantage of another. This is what you must need to know. So many of such things is the way by which God normally pass the message. Number two, whenever you see a seer, a seer is more like an intercessor. More like what? Intercessor. They will pray until they see the manifestation of what they have seen. Follow me quickly and you will discover that this thing that God is showing us is something that is pointing towards a better tomorrow. You remember the story of Jeremiah? It's very interesting what happened to this Jeremiah in his operation. Jeremiah chapter 18. In Jeremiah chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, say, rise up. Yes. Go down to Potter's house. I will now cause you to hear what? To hear what? Now, that is seer anointing. He will see the natural thing. And based upon the natural thing he sees, anointing will come upon him. He will be able to prophesy supernatural thing. And somebody will say, why didn't he just sit at home and see whatever he was seeing? No. Seer anointing means one physical thing. Physical, visible thing. He said, go to the potter's house. Who are potters? Those who mold pot. Praise the Lord. When you see them, not imagining them, when you see them physically, I will now tell you spiritual message. That is the path of a seer. Do we get the picture? And that is why whenever situation is happening, other people will be crying and crying when a seer comes to the place. He sees the spiritual dimension of it. And by the time Jeremiah was seeing a seer anointing, what happened? The Lord now said, look at the way that potter is handling the clay. Children of Israel, they are clay in my hand. I have the power to change their story. Tell them they will not end up in disgrace. Tell them that even though situation breaks them, they are coming back fresh. This is how a seer anointing works. Now, look into yourself and come up with an idea. God has shown you some things ahead of time. But because you do not ask yourself, what exactly am I supposed to do? Some of us, we have the heart of a prophet. That's what we call intuition. You have never seen that thing happen before. But in your heart, your heart can be able to see ahead. That was what happened to Samuel. You remember that when Saul was looking for his father's lost heart. You still remember? But God has revealed to Samuel that this Saul is going to be a king. It was right from his heart. Some people have the heart that can see. Those who have the heart that can see, those ones are called what? They are called what? Prophet. The seer are those who come in contact with physical things. And when they come in contact with that physical things, they receive supernatural message. That was what Joseph did. Physical, when that one had a dream, he was able to arrange it. And then, apart from that, you must realize that life is spiritual. Life is what? Life is what? God himself is what? God himself is what? You yourself, you are what? 
you are a spirit having a soul dwelling in the body. So all we are talking here is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anointing that comes upon you is what makes your heart to be able to see ahead. By the time that um, Saul was told that he was going to be the king, no physical evidence. But the heart of um, um, Samuel has already seen kingship on him. Because the heart can see. Joseph on his own, he was not the dreamer. He looked at the meaning of physical things that was seen. He knew that issues of somebody seeing cow. Cow in the world of man is a business matter. It's a positive thing. But coming out of the water, it doesn't naturally live inside the water. But meaning that economy will improve. I am praying in the name of the Lord of hosts. If there is anything that is closing your inner eyes from seeing ahead, may the Lord Almighty remove that thing away. <laughs> Through this prophetic anointing, some people have gotten their husband. Some people have gotten their wife. They didn't, it's just that their heart tell them, that's your husband. That's your wife. That's the church I want to. That's the house I want to. That's the person I want you to work with. It's enough as to have worked with that person. That is prophetic anointing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophetic what? But when we talk about seer anointing, it comes into a particular place. Other people are not seeing anything. But when that anointing comes upon him or her, that person now can see a supernatural message that God is passing. What am I saying? Job 33. In Job chapter 33, I'm sure you are gaining something to yourself. And I will now pin it down and then we are going to pray and then you continue to work upon that revelation from today. Job chapter 33 from verse 14. For God speaketh once. Yes, twice Man did not perceive it. Many times God is speaking. But human beings, we are too carnal, we are not perceiving. But he says in verse 15, in a dream. Is there anyone who has never dreamt here before? Anyone? I have never dreamt before all my life. You have never dreamt. Is there anyone? Now, that dream is a spiritual message. One ambassador to a particular country was recommended by another person to come for a counseling. Get this and get it well. Otherwise, if people manipulate you, don't come to come and ask for sympathy. They were waiting to have baby, the ambassador. But it wasn't working. Nothing was wrong with the two. And then they were directed to come. By the time they arrived, the man eventually was, oh, you are the pastor? Thank you. Good to meet with you. We have this um, card from one of the people that knows you. They say we should come. I say you are welcome. So along the line, I ask a question. What is the nature of the dream that you normally have? The man say, eh? Dream. Does dream matter? In the matter we are looking for children, does dream matter? I said, if the Bible teaches it, I believe it. Ah, He said, it's my wife that dreams. So me, I don't believe in dream. I just believe that you sleep, you wake up, and that's all. I said, madam, what's the nature of your dream? Now, in the dream of the woman, the message is already relayed at different time on different matter. They did not get the message. And God is a spirit. And is transmitting message to the family. But simply because they are spiritually blind. Or they lack faith. They cannot pick. And the next thing was that their problem continued. In a dream. In a deep sleep. God, when you are sleeping upon your bed. Talk to you. So all those dreams. Pick them. 
and ask yourself, what is the meaning of this dream? By that dream, some people get greater job. By that vision, some people get promotion. By that dream, some people become what they never imagined they could become. Therefore, I cancel you to wake up the prophet in you. I cancel you to wake up the seer in you. Intervention of God upon your heart makes you to see. Intervention of God upon your physical eyes. When you look at the natural thing, makes you to see the supernatural message out of it. Are you getting the message? Therefore, summarily put. Your spirit, to be able to capture the message, you must feed it with the word of God. Read the Bible as regularly as you can read. Bible reading itself opens the prophet in you to see. Bible reading in you open your natural eyes to natural things to receive supernatural message. Therefore, one, from now, you must learn to take your dream seriously. Two, be sensitive to what your heart is seeing. God is a spirit. If he must transmit a message to you, he will do it spiritually. But when the devil wants to torment a life or family, he will close their eyes. They can walk away from their helpers forever. Why? Because their eyes are closed. Some, they get you into a particular tree. And the Lord is saying, look at that tree. I am going to make your life to be as fresh as that. Tell this, tell that. Tell, and by the time you start to speak, because anointing is already upon you, God begins to approve those things. Therefore, as we round up, for you to get your new glory, you must need to recognize the seer anointing. You see to hear. That's a seer anointing. Prophet, their heart sees before they hear. But the seer, they see before God talk to them. Heart sees ahead. A saw who is an ordinary person. But the heart saw ahead and God now spoke. The person before you is a prophet. So today, stir up the gift of God that is in you. The prophet who went to meet, you yourself, you are a prophet. God has been talking to you. It's only because you are not sensitive. That does not say you should not respect other people because the spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophet. But you must realize that the gift that is in you is enough to make you to succeed. You are too loaded to be stranded. When you pray, watch. Is there anything God is talking to your spirit? If God says, I am waiting for you in the forest, and you went to Federal Palace Hotel, you are wasting your time. That forest, he told you, until you get there before you meet God. God cannot change his pattern because of you. Rather, you must change to meet God. Therefore, as you want to pray now, you are going to pray to the Lord. Whatever has been making me to be confused in life, Lord, deliver me from them. Many of you, you are a prophet, you are prophetesses, because your heart can see. When you see somebody straight, the Lord is talking with you, he says, uh, uh, keep quiet, keep quiet, it is Satan, it is Satan. But when God is talking, he says, well, uh, uh, when Satan is talking, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. But when Satan is talking, he now says, speak, Lord, your servant is hearing. But when God is talking, he says, keep quiet. Initially, because of the ignorance of Samuel, when he started, he said, Samuel, Samuel, where did he go? He went to Eli. 
Because he didn't know. Many of you have gone to those who will damage your story. Because you don't know what God is saying. So from today, I challenge you. Go and study around that word. To wake up the prophet in you, the prophetess in you. I challenge you to go and wake up the seer in you. And by the time I'm praying from here, you will now understand that even though I may not close my eyes, but I can see to a realm that other people may not see into. And that is how God operates to deliver his people. But many of us were blind. Satan blinded our eyes and he doesn't allow us to see. He blind our heart. He didn't allow us to see. Some people have wandered away 20 years into the wilderness when they're supposed to just move a little bit and exercise patience. Rise up on your feet to say to the Lord from today, I will no longer walk in darkness. Help me out of my blindness. Assist me. You can pick up your Bible and read more. Between that seer anointing and prophet anointing, that will make you to be stable instead of you running after prophet and seers and manipulators. I'm not saying there are no seers, there are no prophets, but a lot of people are manipulated. You are going to cancel everything that is called spirit of blindness away from your life that God will guide your path. Lord, please guide my way. Don't allow my story to rot. Don't permit my matter to go bad. Help me to recognize. Samuel initially did not recognize that an anointing has come upon him. He was supposed to hear before he can see. Say, Samuel, Samuel. He rushed and go and meet Eli. You are going to pray that you are not going to end up in Eli's net. A lot of people have been trapped in the net of Eli. But the Lord is saying, you can be free. And you are going to pray in the name of Jesus that the gift of God in you will wake up. The grace of God in you will wake up. The goodness of God in you will wake up. The prophet in you will wake up. Anointing of the Lord will come upon you. You will have it. If you want the combined anointing of the two, it is possible. You can be a seer and a prophet. Your heart can see. And you can see physical things. And spiritual messages are coming to you. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. I'm praying immediately now to tell you that your season is changing. Right from today, everything that blindfolds and has been blindfolding you from seeing correctly, let the power of God knock them away in the name of Jesus. I pray anointing of the Lord will flow upon you. And the prophet in you will start to see with your heart. When somebody stands before you, you will see the correct person. Say a life amen to that. And a seer anointing will start to walk upon your body. And that in the name of the Lord, when you see natural things, you are going to receive supernatural messages. In the name of Jesus Christ. One thing that is common to the two is that the word of God must be the basis. One thing that is common to the two, anointing of God must be the basis. So that when you are meeting with sorcerers, you will be able to know this is not the spirit of God. Because in you a seer anointing is at work. Because in you a prophet anointing is at work. When somebody comes to you to come and give you a fake business, the prophet in you should be able to see ahead. And therefore, I pray in the name of Jesus, stretch your two hands to the front. Father, I pray that the gift of God upon the life of every one of these people will come up today. From today, you will start to see. From today, you start to hear. From today, your testimony will be greater. From today, you will know who to avoid. From today, you will need to know those to work with. And I also prophesy upon this church. This church combined anointing of prophet and seer will raise you to a higher level. Are you saying amen to that? Whatever is out of weakening your spiritual power, 
is broken away today in Jesus' name. Amen. And from today, your heart will see ahead. Amen. Your eyes will see what is around you. Amen. You will no longer be trapped. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. When that spirit is at work, it makes discerning spirit easy. Oh, these are the servants of God that show us the way of salvation. The man of God knew supernaturally. The heart saw the correct thing that this is a fake and a manipulator. Every manipulator around you, they will fail this year. Amen. Say a life amen to that. Amen. Every pit they have dug for you, for your family this year, you are not going to fall into it. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. Manifestation of progress will be visible on your matter. The Lord will sanctify your eyes. Sanctify your nose. Sanctify your mouth. Sanctify your legs. Sanctify your hands. And the gift of God will grow through you. To benefit your life. And benefit the family. And benefit the church. From today. And testimony forever. By December you will celebrate your spiritual revival. Yeah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In Jesus' progressive name, we have prayed. Yeah. And amen. Can we put our hands together to say thank you to Jesus?